I love it. All right, I reckon we'll be hearing cheering like that here, hopefully very soon. Thanks so much, Eddie, because once Kate and William's baby is born, the world will wait in anticipation for the first family photo. Now, here in London, I met a man who's photographed the royal family over four generations, and now he's released never-before-seen images, and he's spilling the beans on what it's really like to work with royalty. From fairy tale weddings to regal babies, Ian Pelham Turner has helped create the Royal Family photo album for the last 48 years. His first major job was photographing Prince William's first Christmas. To say I was nervous is a total <laughs> understatement. For two weeks beforehand, I, I hadn't eaten at all. A royal photo shoot with royal rules. The 30 second rule meant that uh, if you go 30 seconds over any royal occasion, it throws the rest of their day out. You are totally frowned upon. You were not allowed to talk to the royal family. You were not allowed to direct them. And you had seven minutes to take the official photographs. But things didn't go according to plan. Diana had positioned William's teething ring right in front of her face. So for four of the seven minutes, I ha could not see the most famous woman in this world. And you're not allowed to speak to her. You're not allowed to speak to her, her direct her, or anything straightforward at all. So in the end, I made a noise like I was dying. <laughs> and I was. How does that sound? Inside. Oh, you, you, <laughs> you don't want to hear that on national TV. <laughs> Diana turned round towards me, realised that the teething ring was right in front of her face, pulled the teething ring away, William went to grab the teething ring, and in one sixtieth of a second, my career was made. Then it got a little interesting for Ian. Diana decided to pick William up and walk straight towards the camera. So we kept on shooting. Uh, and so uh, Diana was throwing William up in the air. I could see Charles in the background and Charles was not happy. It was a battle for the spotlight between Diana and Charles. Then Charles decided to take some action himself. So he reached over and took William from Diana and then placed him on his tummy on his own knee and started tickling him so they were all at one stage realizing that um, who was going to make the greatest photograph of that particular day. So it was a competition basically Charles and Diana were competing we, we, to be the front of the photo. I, I think so. These photos and more are on display in London at the Royal Child Exhibition at the Athenium Hotel. A picture tells a story and I love the story and all the emotion that goes with every single picture. Helena Chard is also a royal photographer. This particular picture was taken by Frank King, who is a photographer that we're trying to search for. Um, we don't know where he is, we think he could be in Australia. The exhibition includes never-before-seen photos of the Queen. This is a lovely picture of um, Lilibet um, and she is basically greeting a war veteran. Um, and it's very interesting because she, as a child, and also today, she was a very orderly child um, and really was made to, to be queen. And for the full royal experience, there's scones and tea too. So this is quite fancy. This is all the royal favourites. Uh, the Battenberg is another of the Queen's favourite cakes. And given your history of, of photographing the royal family, how different is it now? The big differences nowadays is that it's much uh, more open. Uh, than it was at that time. So how do you think William and Kate will be with their, their new baby? I think they're going to be tremendous. They're really nice people to work with as well. Um, and they have that touch of the people. Those photos, guys, are absolutely breathtaking. And he was absolutely lovely. Ian had so many stories. Seriously, we could have talked for days and days. And while I'm filling your heads with, um, with trivia, how's this to pop into your bottomless pit? So the difference I learned between afternoon tea and high tea. So what would happen was the aristocrats would have afternoon tea, and that was served on a little tiny low table about knee length and knee height, where they'd you know, pop their finger up and drink their tea and eat their little cucumber sandwiches. And the staff and the, sort of the, the, the poorer class, I guess, you know what English is like over here, um, would have their afternoon tea on a higher table, and that was called high tea. So the fancy one is actually afternoon tea, not high tea. Right. Isn't that interesting? Oh, isn't that interesting? I feel like I'm living Downton Abbey. Right here. Right. Right. And do you like this? Yeah, oh, no, isn't it? Sorry, and Mel. Can I just point one thing out, guys? Tell me, this is not the most beautiful backdrop. Yeah, no. With the moon. Sorry, no.
Isn't this beautiful? It's oh, gorgeous. Yeah. I know. Lovely. Nice. There are worse places to be than, you know, London yeah. in a, in oh, a heat wave. You go to wait out for baby. Yeah. So you think so? Absolutely. Made his baby cook another nine months. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, don't say that. No. no. Uh, and Lily Bet. That's a lovely name. Yeah, no, that, that was Queens what the Queen was called. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Never heard of that. Uh, thank you, Mel. Talk to you soon.